November 19th. Oh, sorry. Commissioner Brovey? Here. Commissioner Gillespie? Here. Commissioner Lustelo? Here. Commissioner Matina? Here. Commissioner Mills? Here. Commissioner Smith? Mm -hmm. Jeff is not going to be here today. Perfect. Um, <laughs> I could be here. Commissioner Shield? Present. Commissioner Abel? Here. Commissioner Lyons? Here. Commissioner Rushing? Here. And Commissioner Constant? Here. At the bottom there. At the bottom of the bill. Madam Chair, real quick, too, for those looking for the password, it's the Lakeport Meeting Hall is the one you want to log on to. And it's 18 Lakeport with a capital L, 80. So 18 Lakeport, 80, capital L. Oh, this is perfect. Thank you. Did that work, Denise? It <coughs> seems to have worked. Yes. I will. <laughs> Great. Uh, of the minutes. Is there anything we need to support from the minutes? Um, Madam Chair, I have a correction. <coughs> at, the, at the top of the minutes, it's, it's listing me as the chair and you as the vice chair, and I believe you had already become chair. Okay. So, I would fix that. Anything else? Okay. Um, Madam Chair? Move to approve the minutes as corrected. Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Public comment. This is the time for the public to address the commission on any matter not on the agenda. Testimony related to an item on the agenda should be presented at the time that item is considered. Do we have any public comment? All right. The consent agenda. Um, expenses. Do you want to talk about anything on the consent agenda? Yeah, Madam Chair, if there's no discussion, I would move approval of the consent agenda as presented. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Uh, public hearing. We have a continued public hearing regarding the service review for the Watershed Protection District. Uh, we're going to review the revised hearing draft. John? Thank you. you. You have a revised hearing draft. You notice, I'm going to start with the minutes. You notice the minutes are a little longer than normal. And I wanted, before getting into any corrections on the, um, uh, the hearing draft, I wanted to make sure that the minutes were correct. And so I worked with Betsy on getting the minutes so that they were properly edited. And um, the content was there and verified. Did I hear something right at the last meeting? And um, and so, as, uh, as, uh, and she was a big help in, in helping to put the minutes together uh, based on the testimony and evidence at the last meeting. Um, from that came the, uh, the public review draft number two, or revision number one, the revision that you have in front of you today with the, um, you have the edits, and as you recall, I sent you the uh, electronic copies and posted it on the website uh, showing the changes from the pre prior draft based on the meeting that took place or hearing that took place last time. So that's what you have before you. Okay. Now, um, last, the last few days I've received a few comments. Um, one was from the county requesting to meet with me and uh, Jennifer um, to go over the draft to provide the, their comments on that draft. Okay. Um, uh, then there was a, uh, and I don't have, unfortunately I don't have these for you because some of these I received where I didn't have access to a printer or anything is that there was a, a comment from Mike Dunlap who will probably speak and Maurice Taylor the same thing regarding that we should essentially go ahead and approve it. They've had time to review it, you know, essentially. Um, now today, or last night, I received some comments from Betsy um, regarding um, well, a variety of things in the, I had some financial information and um, a report that she did for the, um, for the uh, MSR committee. 
as well as a letter to Senator Chesbro when the original legislation was written. And um, I'm going to let Betsy address all of those comments because I've not really had time to thoroughly review these. And uh, she's in a better position to present those than I am. So Sorry, I, it, I was, it took out every minute of the last four days to put it together. So, uh, so that's what we have. Um, a concern that I have with this project, as well as any project that will come before LAFCO, is cost. Because I, I am very concerned about our budget, and that, um, that if our budget keeps getting um, depleted by this, because every, you know, time is money, and um, that we won't have uh, any funds to finish any other projects we'll work on. The fire service review is one that I want to take up, you know, in a, Next, not the next meeting, but I wanted to be clear like MSR next meeting. And uh, we have a reorganization with the RCDs I want to take up at the next meeting also. So, but that's, that's a, a concern that I have. Uh, I want to make sure that in the process, committee members, the public, and the county are all treated fairly. And with that, I'm, uh, that is uh, my present uh, presentation. The recommendation is, is that the commission should make a determination on what you wish to do with the, um, the hearing draft and which process you want to, to follow for, for the next meeting um, and for this meeting, how we can bring this to a completion. Any questions for John? I had a quick question. What did we imagine the budget for this would be and what have we spent so far? Uh, I can get you the figures. Is that uh, I'll just put it this way: is that our uh, reserve last year, our carryover was less because of the of time utilized in this project, and uh, and that this year so far we oh you got the, the spreadsheet what we spent we spent about is that no no that's not our our budget I need to look at our expense sheet. And uh, I can give you what we spent this year, but this has been going on for a couple of years, and uh, and it just cost a lot of money. Let, let's put it this way: it's been a very expensive MSR, and that's and that's because of the, the public process. I mean, it, it just it's the way it is when you have engaged members of the public. Things just cost more. And uh, but this year, if I can look on my budget, because I don't, we haven't spent a lot of time with. Doing that, uh, uh, we've spent about five thousand dollars this year. Essentially, uh, uh, some of that uh, in there was for other MSRs. And what did you think we would spend on this one? I was thinking we'd wrap it up um, in August. That didn't happen. So a couple so, of thousand? Yeah, a few thousand more than I thought for this year. I can get you a detail because well, I. That's okay. I, I just detail. wanted a rough idea. It's just that it's it, it's overrun in terms of budget. I mean that's that's the uh, qualitative response. Yeah. Okay. Anything else from the commission before we take public input on this item? Um, I think we need to address the county's request. Yeah, I figured we have plenty to discuss, but uh, did Betsy or Mike have anything you want to bring up? Oh, yes, Madam Chair. Thank you. <coughs> um, first of all, I'd like to say that my overall goal today is to have you adopt the uh, resolution and move this to the agenda of the Board of Directors of the district. Because no, we shouldn't spend any more money or time on it here. It now has to go to the people who are in charge of managing the district. And if, if the administration has a quibble with something that's been said in a draft that's been reviewed by you in detail, with support from John and I editorially, then I think they should take it to their own board of directors. So that would be my overall request. Um, if you look on the, 
attachments that I, the uh, package I gave you, the third attack, the third piece is a mind numbing chart. I'm sorry, this printer didn't do a good job. But it shows that the district has an actual uh, budget ended June 30, 2015 of nearly $2 million. I don't think $5,000 is a lot to spend to try to understand what happens to this $2 million. And that's part of the objective of the committee, which reported to you almost a year ago, in fact, a year ago and a day, the problem with understanding the way this money is used. And that's at the crux of this decision. Um, we we uh, looked at all of the work that we've done and came to some conclusions, primarily because the motivation here is to help the county. The motivation here is to address the findings of this 19 57 report from the California Department of Water Resources. It's bulletin number 14, the Lake County investigation. This precipitated the 1963 request from the Board of Supervisors to the State Department of Water Resources for help to deal with the algae. Now, so we're talking 57, 63, in 1990, all of the jurisdictional agencies in this county formed a group to address it. It was called the Coordinated Resource Management Committee. It contained all of the agencies and all of the departments and all of the players that needed to work together. And it was a very successful process for 10 years until in 2000 it produced the first Clear Lake Basin Management Plan. Uh, that was about a 65-page document, had a list of 47 things that the stakeholders decided they needed to have taken care of all of the stakeholders, not just the Board of Supervisors, not just a couple of people who are their special pets or the Chamber of Commerce, all of the stakeholders. And these things remain unfinished today. So the amount of money that's been spent for the last 10 years on theoretically implementing the required, the recommendations of the 1994 document called the causes and control of algal blooms in Clear Lake has virtually accomplished little other than the superficial tasks like weed and algae abatement. We appreciate those need to be done because we appreciate the grooming process of taking care of all of our natural resources. We're not saying that's a bad thing. But we're not accomplishing these tasks that have been agreed upon now for almost two decades. The last thing in the package is a one-page um, <coughs> excerpt from that 1994 report by the UC Davis scientists that says that they, they really, re everyone realized you need a single central agency to pull all this work together. And we still do, and I believe that we should ask the Watershed Protection District to take that job. And that's basically the only reason that we've done all this work. We want to support a district that will help us implement these long-standing, well-understood environmental restoration and economic restoration plans. Um, and, and the reason I pull this other junk at you, this paper here, is because uh, in the actual content of the MSR as it stands today, there are two tables. One says Water Resources Administration, the other one says Watershed Protection District. Each table has dollar figures in each of the slots. For both tables, the budget units are the same. So the numbers differ because there are different budgets for different parts of the budget unit. So I went to the county budget. And this page, this document here, this is the 18 page document. Without page numbers. Without page numbers. You have to put them in yourself. So, um, <laughs> so um, I'm not going to call any particular right amount. I'm just going to tell you that I went through every page of the county budget. I went to every schedule. I went to every report. In any schedule or report where there was a citation that referred to a budget unit, I replicated that 
in the section for net budget unit, there are nine major budget units for the watershed protection district, as, a, as, it, as we understand it. And for each one of them, there are separate schedules and appropriations and fund balances, obligated fund balances and so forth, overviews, reserves, designations. Here's the upshot. I could not correspond any of the numbers in these reports to any of the numbers in the budget tables in the MSR. I rest my case. Thank you, Ben. Can I have some questions? Um, and I'm going to ask one question that just kind of takes upset. Uh, there, there are some things that, um, Betsy, you've said that are uh, declarative as if they're true. One of them is that this board has reviewed this MSR in detail. I think we have detail, um, but I've been waiting for the county comments on this draft. So I'm, I don't have them in hand yet. I've been hoping to get them. I've read one side of this, which is everything that's been kind of put together, but I don't have the other bit. And it's not necessarily, I appreciate the case that if you can't make sense of the numbers that they don't make sense, but I'm not sure that that's entirely true until I understand, you know, is it you can't make sense of the numbers because the numbers are incomprehensible, or is it you can't make sense of the number because we haven't sat down with the people who did the numbers to understand where they go. So that's, I, I need to hear from the county, I personally need to hear from the county. And I, and they're not in this yet. May I answer that question, please? Yeah. Um, Suzanne, did you want to say something? Yeah, I, uh, one of the things that flabbergasted me was getting a letter that said the county needed to make their case. It's been two years. I, I, I'm, if you had something to say, one would think that you would have said it. I, they said I, they received their draft on the 11th of November. The second draft. The second draft. Oh, well, they did. We spent a substantial amount of time at our last meeting going through line by line the entire draft, and they had a chance to make their comments on the entire draft. And that's where the changes came from in this draft. Right. And so now, you know. They're asking maybe, for the next. They're asking to do it again. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure why. Uh, maybe you know. I, you know. But, and the other thing there, is we do have people who sit on this commission, who sit on that board. I, I don't know, but it seems to me that when you sit on a commission, that you make your, don't you make your report back to your board of directors and say, this is what's happening here. I thought that's what we did. I thought that's why we went to committees, so that we took it back to our governing board and said, this is what's happening. What do you want to do about it? I, I, I really am surprised. I, I'm with Betsy. My, my comment on the Water Resources Administration budget fund, I'm, huh? And I've, I've read a lot of this. But one of the things that that I did have a question, and this question I think is for Scott. Um, there, it says in here, if I can find it now, that the um, oops, I don't know if I said. It says that Lafco never approved the. Uh, um, here it is. Uh, with the implementation of 1136 was never approved by LAFCO, even though LAFCO continues to have the authority to determine the powers exercised and the sphere of influence of the district. And if that's the case, then what, what I would like to see is I would like to see this brought back, um, see, put paid to this, and shouldn't LAFCO be looking at a sphere of influence then with this district because I, I do believe that that's one of the problems is that we have a responsibility, the Watership Protection District has a responsibility for a lot of things over which we have no control. And so I guess my question from, from Scott is, um, we talk about uh, um, could LAFCO require as part of the approvals of the um, the powers in the sphere a reorganization of the um, district. Well, I'm not sure that the... Um, <laughs> Premises I mean, are right. <laughs> what page are you at? Uh, I'm on page 32 with the governance structure, structure, and I'm on page... 
uh, and I'm on page 29. We have pages. Yay. Page 29, um, uh, second to the last, third to the last paragraph, 3 uh, 4, about in the middle, the organization of the Watershed Protection District was never approved. Reason 3 4, right at the middle. I don't know. I haven't looked at the original documents for the uh, creation of this district to determine what uh, powers it was originally given versus the powers that it's now exercising. But that's obviously something that is probably in the MSR. Um, I don't think specifically. We don't have a chart saying that this is what they were given and this is what they're doing. I believe, though, that they are providing the talent is that they were enabled in 1136. And those items that are not within 1136, though that the, the, the department, see there's this confusion, this is a, there's this blurred line between the Department of Water Resources and the Watershed Protection District. And so there appears there could be overlap, but nevertheless, the district does prepare provide the stuff that they weren't able to do in 1136. But perhaps the department does some of this too. So, you know, there's no clear line. That was my problem. And that leads to the budget issues too, is that I too was confused at reading uh, the budgets and where the, the flow of money, and that's indicated in the MSR also. So uh, maybe that's something that needs to be done. It's a chart. Okay, this is what 1136 does. This is what you're doing, and this is what you're not doing. Uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, well, and, and I, well, so I had a question then that if the district cannot do anything that, that <coughs> a, quick, a quick review of 1136, I'm not sure the district is empowered to do anything else other than what's in 1136. So that's something we, we need to look at. Well, okay, the watershed protection, like Mark Dellinger mentions in the letter, well, they're going the district is going to do, the watershed protection district is going to do the groundwater for the county. No, it's not. The delegation was given to the county government. The county government will decide who's going to do that. And that's, that's the correct thing. And if the Watershed Protection District takes it on, are they allowed to under 1136? Those are questions I don't have answers to. And they would probably be, be best addressed by the County Council. May I try, Madam Chair? Yeah, go. <laughs> <laughs> SB 1136 amends <clears throat> Chapter 62 of the California Water Code, which <clears throat> empowers the Flood Control and Water Conservation District to do everything is necessary to conserve water, develop water, capture water, use water, it's all the same as it has been for all these years. Then SB 1136 added the responsibility for, Im for implementing the stormwater permit under the state law. It also said, because you need the money, we're going to give you the tools to get it. These are your authorities to tax, assess, and set fees. I personally cannot believe after five years of conversing with some of you about the questions of the Watershed Protection District and SB 1136 and its organizational capacities that I am still hearing the lack of comprehension that is reflected here today. Excuse me. I think she's referring to me, perhaps. No, I'm referring to John. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay, well, um, what is 1136? Okay, what powers does it have? Hang on a second. I'm but sorry. We're not going to make personal attacks here. So uh, right now no? we sorry. are having no. public hearing open for service review. Does Denise? Well, you did something? ask if we had, as commissioners, had questions, and I have yes. one uh, questions or comments. I do have one other comment. There's plenty of comments. I mean, honestly, there's a lot here, right? That we've got. And many of these things I can agree with, and many of them I'm looking at if it's true, and I'm waiting to hear what the county has to say. But the one, uh, one thing I know is if my name's on something, whether it's true or not true, and there was a comment uh, that the uh, Watershed Protection District Municipal Service Review c Conclusions document, the three pages says, item 16 was that Commission Member Rushing's, Denise Rushing stated the Commission does not have the authority to address the lack of adequate financial information. 
Well, that's in the video. On November 20th, 2013. Well, if I said that, I don't, um, it, it, I must have been misunderstood. It's not in the minutes of 2013. It's in the video. It's in the video. It, yeah, well, if it's in the video, <laughs> I think I was misunderstood because it, I don't it, even remember it thinking could be. that. Well, it, it could be. That was a very complicated conversation. Yeah, which and, is and why maybe I wasn't clear, but I don't remember thinking that. Which is why say. I put the link to the video. Okay, so I appreciate, everybody I appreciate can see that, it. but I would like to clarify. If I said okay. that, that's sure. not what I meant. Okay. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. Thank you. Good, thank you. Um, anyone else from the public? Mike, do you want to come up? You do have the microphone. Uh -huh. Well, good morning. For the record, I'm Mike Dunlap. I have been a member of the committee that uh, was appointed by you all. Well, some of you, some of you have changed since I was appointed to work on the municipal service review for the watershed protection district. It's been a long journey. Um, notwithstanding your executive director's statements uh, about the involvement of the public driving up the cost. The involvement of the public in this particular case has done virtually all of the footwork and investigation and drawing together of facts and figures at zero cost to this commission. So I want to make that point clear for everybody. And thankfully, we are on the record and being videotaped. So if anybody wishes to dispute that, now would be a good time. Second, um, I partook of this process because it was my understanding that LAFCO had an independent agency view of reviewing municipalities and districts in the county. That your responsibility is to have some oversight and make suggestions or findings for them to improve or expand their services to their members, the public that pays for their municipality or district. I don't want to get into personality things here this morning. I don't believe that's an appropriate thing to do in this forum. I don't believe it's ever an appropriate thing to do in a public forum. I think we want to stick to the facts, and I believe that the committee has put together the facts and presented them in the first draft, which the county got. The county had the opportunity. They were present at the meeting when that was given to this commission. They have had a significant period of time to respond if they didn't agree with anything in that. Nothing came to the committee, either directly or indirectly through the executive director. So, you know, when the second draft was done, it was done in coordination with your executive director. And the committee has, has come to its own conclusions. We made our own findings of that. We, you know, through our librarian, as I refer to her, Betsy printed this stuff out. Um, I don't believe anything in it is controversial. If the county wishes to, con you know, to do that, I think at this point, this process has gone on long enough and that this commission's responsibility is to make a finding that a municipal service review has been done and send it off to the board of directors of the district. And if the county wishes to, con to contend that there is something wrong with it or that the board of directors of that district should hear something different from the county, it is a separate legal entity. Let them make that argument to that board of directors. I want you to move on. Yes, you have got lots of other things to do, and this is done. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Anyone else from the public? Uh, yeah, I think that the reason that we did this MSR in the beginning, it, when we two years ago when we started talking about this, nobody even knew what the Watershed Protection District was. Even the people who were sitting as its board of directors were unclear as to its function. So I think that the job of work that was done here was really done well. Um, I think the commission has actually done something 
that is really important here. We're, um, we're looking at an entity that, uh, that we've made the populace aware of. We have looked at its responsibilities and its jurisdiction. And we have an opportunity to, to create here, everybody together, the Board of Supervisors and all the rest of the players, um, to get a fully functioning entity. One of the things that we've tried to do three times now is pass um, an ordinance to try to manage our lake. One of the reasons, I think the major reason that we haven't been able to do this, because obviously the majority of the people who vote at least, a great majority of them really want to see this done. The big hang up has been nobody understands how it works, nobody understands how the money works. Betsy finally got me to go look at the Ventura Watershed Protection District. And what is amazing there is I can look at their five-year plan and I can go in and I can say, wow, they're going to tell me that they are going to, in the Happy Valley pipe uh, uh, reconstruction, put in 300 linear feet of 8-inch uh, pipe to replace 4-inch pipe because it's a Title 22 mandate and here's a map and here's how much money it's going to cost over five years and here is the environmental and it's this big. It's, it's a quarter of a page of this report. If they can do it, we can do it. People ought to be able to look at what the Watershed Protection District is doing, what it costs, and they ought to be able to find that. And, and we found that it's very difficult to get this information. It shouldn't be. It's just kind of a mess, and it shouldn't be. And I think that what we've said is, we need to clean it up. It's, we're not mad at anybody. It's just, let's fix it now so that we can take care of our watershed and take care of our land. A uh, planning process. I'm wondering how we go through this. Do, I mean, one way we could do it is to look at their, the municipal service review determinations item by item and find out from John whether there's been county comments in the past on that item and whether it's been resolved or not resolved or if there's still disagreement. Another way is to um, wait for the county to come and give us the comments. I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, I guess I would say maybe we just go through starting with uh, section four and go through line by, you know, item by item to see if it's... Uh, we did do that last time. Yeah. I, I That's the meeting I missed, so I apologize. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, we spent quite a bit of time going line by line. But, but what, what I don't know is whether it, we've adopted the county's comments or if they Maybe still have outstanding comments on. Yeah, you know, my yeah, comment is pretty point. easy. I've not received any county comments okay. on section four. And those are the determinations. Yeah. Uh, we can go through them <laughs> one four, by one. Sections if, four if and five. And That's the most important part of the MSR is yeah. section four. Yeah. Those are the determinations. And if you want, we can go through them. Well, I'm, I'm just asking the process question. Yeah. I'm not saying what we should do. I just wonder what the best process going forward would be. Yeah, thank you. I'd just like to weigh in on this. I think we should continue this item to the meeting in January. And I have two reasons for suggesting that. One is because we have a letter from the county administrator asking for us to do that so that they have time to review and comment. But the other reason is that I received a whole bunch of new stuff that I haven't had a chance to read. One is a three-page of the document from Betsy. And, you know, I'm sure we all got that, but it's not reasonable to expect us to digest all this stuff, you know, an hour before the meeting and then be able to come to a good conclusion. So I just think, for both reasons, we should continue. Yeah. Um, thank you. And I want to wholeheartedly agree with what you said. And I want to go back, I don't know how many years ago it was, we did the uh, Lake uh, Water District, MSR. Remember that? It was three or four years ago. Right. And it was controversial. There were some issues. Right. And when they were brought up, we afforded each person the opportunity and entity to air those and vet those before we do. And 
and I believe we need to afford that same opportunity here. We have a request to do that. And, and there, the uh, folks that have done the, the work, that is commendable. Thank you. But what is the um, what is the problem with what I'm having had a request from the uh, CAO of the county about the review? They did not have the opportunity to review this. Mike has said they've had two years to, to do it. Well, that would even be that. And there's a, would we, uh, as, a, as a commissioner of this, I would not, we afforded the same opportunity to Lower Lake Water District. Why would we not afford the same opportunity to the county board? Yeah, I, I just have a question. Are, is this commission that's sitting now going to be the commission that is sitting in February? Yeah. Because that, I think that one of the things that could be a really big problem is if this commission changes the people who are on it, you're going to have, you could have a lot of people who have no idea what this last two years has been about. We can and they're going to be the people that are voting. I, I think that could be really problematic. We could have a December meeting. That's true. Certainly. We could have a December meeting, and it would be very reasonable from my point of view to um, go back to the uh, uh, CEO of the county and say we would honor that request, and we'll be meeting in December. And that uh, is your last opportunity. Yeah, we'll wrap it up. Or wrap it up. We all want to wrap this up. Yeah, no, kidding. <laughs> no kidding. And by the way, the party. this is eating leftovers four days in a row. <laughs> Does anyone else feel differently? Well, anyone else? No? You guys are pretty quiet over there. <laughs> yeah, I do have a comment. Yeah. I'm uh, new at this, and it seems to me that there's two representatives from the county, what I would call the county, and I don't understand how that information doesn't get back to the CAO of the county and why he is pushing us around or uh, ignoring this conviction. Why well, can't I mean, he has had several a lot of opportunity the county apparently to address these issues that have been brought up. So I'll take, uh, so. I, I think I can take this on. <laughs> By the two representatives you're say, suggesting that Supervisor Comstock and myself might be able to direct the county CAO yes. um, to do to get this done faster. And the reality is this item came before the Board of Supervisors in the past. The Board of Supervisors basically as a board voted that they didn't think LAFCO had jurisdiction over, over this. Mm -hmm. So um, if you want, as individual board members obviously we can ask the county administrative office to focus on this as a priority and get it done before the next LAFCO meeting. But as a complete Board of Supervisors, um, the board has already said they don't think LAFCO has the jurisdiction. Uh, is this from their county council? <laughs> No. It's illegal. I beg your pardon? <laughs> no, 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 it's not from the county council. And the county council, basically the board realizes it's happening, and the county administrative staff realizes it's happening. Um, their point wasn't that they didn't comment or didn't have a chance to comment in the past because they, they saw prior drafts. Their recent point, apparently, and this is the first you know week I've seen this letter, right, since uh, I saw it yesterday, I guess. Um, their point is that they wanted a chance to comment on the final public draft, and they got it on the 11th, and they haven't, they've been gone this week and haven't had a chance to comment. So if you're asking, like, could we have pushed them and said, please get it done, maybe we could have had we known, but we didn't know either, so that that was the issue, that they hadn't had a chance to work up their comments. All right, thank you. I, I found that out, I think, Monday, you know. You know, I think the disappointment here is that we spent a lot of time last time, and we had Alan here, and we had Scott here, and we went line by line, and we came up with the verbiage. The only thing that's new is that it's all together in a draft. And but they're saying there's things that haven't been included that they wanted included, and that we don't know what those are. That's the problem. We don't know. But they had the chance to tell us what those were in the last meeting, and that's I, on video. I, I understand, and Sorry. it's important that everyone has a chance to look it over. But what I'm trying to explain is the disappointment, since not everyone was at the meeting, the amount of time and effort that was put into it. And now we're not, uh, we're considering not moving forward because the county hasn't done their side of it. 
That's the let's, let's, that's all I'm saying. I've, that's fair enough, but let's go, let's go back and say what the county's issue is. It's not that they have never seen any drafts in the past. The right. county's issue is they want a chance to say what's in and not in the final draft, because there's a final draft that's come out. Apparently, there are some things in there that they still disagree with, and we don't know what those are. And, and if, as a commissioner, I mean, I'd like to know what they are. Maybe I disagree with the county staff on it. I don't know, because I don't know what they're seeing that isn't still there. So one way we could do it is to move ahead and say, let's find out item by item what the county's position was at the last meeting and see if it was adopted in this particular line item and if it's still, you know, we could do it ourselves line item by line item or we could ask the county to tell us what remains in there that's, they, they're still That's, that's what I'm saying, we're done. We've already done the line by line. So yeah. the only last thing is the, the potential that the county thinks something is left out. So it's up to the commission if you guys want to continue the public hearing, if we want to consider doing it in December, or if we want to go ahead and adopt it. Um, I, Madam Chair, I recall when I think it was at the last meeting, Alan did say he had several other comments that he wanted to make. He was not going to address them until we had the chance to review. Am I the only one that remembers that? It's on video. It's on video. Yeah, Well, in any case, he knew that today was the meeting. Um, they're, they're out of town. They're out of town. It's fine. They're out of town, and they did not receive it. They're at CSAC, actually. Yeah. So, <coughs> let's hold a December meeting and say, this is, you got till whatever our date is December. I, I think that's very reasonable. Yeah. We're not until late January. December, everybody, well, let's let the city council sit at the first meeting of December. Madam Chair, also, County, if, don't change. if we do a December meeting, will we be able to take action on a final draft at that point? Because we're going to be receiving comments prior to that meeting that may necessitate some changes. And maybe that's it. Well, we should be able to well, January, then we'd be waiting until March. So if we went in December, and then we could fiddle, then we should be January. I see this <coughs> target getting it done. Yeah. <laughs> you know, getting it done is important, but getting it done well, getting it done right is one of the That's exactly Well, we clearly need a strategy of how we might get this done, though. Sure. But in, in Matt Perry's letter, if I might, he's, you know, he's saying, on your, um, you received the final draft of November 11th, and upon review, uh, is concerned about several misleading or inaccurate statements. He doesn't say what those are. We could have written it. Why not? If it really, truly is inaccurate or misleading, we need to straighten that out. I was just thinking that the way to perhaps facilitate this would be for you to set a date certain, at least a week before your next meeting, for them to get their comments in, so that we have, as staff, have the ability to address them. If, for example, they point out there's a misspelling here, we can correct that in the draft before the meeting, or or consider making the changes for the meeting that then would facilitate your actual adoption at the December meeting. But we but we have to be very clear to them on the deadline to get their comments in. And hopefully then they would uh, they would comply. I also think we should send them Betsy's comments we received today so that they're aware of the entire context of what we're considering. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. I think that, that puts it, we need, we need to drop their date, this is it. And if they don't respond, they don't respond, then we will, we have to Well, I think we're ready for a motion. Any other public comment? Do we have a motion? Madam Chair, I was looking for a motion. We uh, postpone the action on this until a special meeting which we will be holding in December. Uh, we should not have that date and time right now. I think we need to decide right now what date. That's what I said. So that we can put it in a... So we can put How it about in, the so date would be... The usual date. Uh, we are actually, I have the lack of this. So we set a meeting for that. It is the same thing. Put it on the 17th? <coughs> yes. How about the 10th? The 10th is available. The 10th is the 8th. I'm not available. Jim, Jim, myself, and Stacey would be available. Please don't be Chris. We have ABC. There are four on each side. Good job! I like that one. I'm totally free that day. <laughs> <laughs>
the 16th or the 18th? Our present. 16th, what day of the week? That's a Tuesday. And the 18th is a Thursday. It's on either side of the normal day. Well, Tuesdays don't a, work. I have a triple oh. A. <laughs> How about the A? A couple of us can't be there. The 18th? The in the afternoon, perhaps, but not in the morning. Hang on, one second. Or right sure. This needs to take priority. The 18th in the afternoon? I, I mean, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Thursday the 18th. Oh, yeah. Oh, what time in the afternoon? I'm thinking 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock. Denise, what time are you available on the 18th in the afternoon, do you think? Um, any time after 1. I have to be in Ukiah in the morning for a AAA meeting. 2 o'clock on the 18th of December. And, and will you be holding it here? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, it's going to be at La a Lakeport City Hall. Yes. Is that where you want it? Right here. That makes sense. Okay, we'll have to make sure we get the room. I think someone could probably find well, that out right now. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do that. Okay, and okay. also in my motion that it is, this is the last <laughs> day <laughs> period for input. That's it. Well, we're going to Question. <laughs> right. Well, we will close. Well, you can't say you have close. Yeah. <coughs> Madam Chair. The public. Okay, so hang on a second. Can you repeat your motion with the date and time, please? Probably not. Uh, Let's do. I, I move that we continue this until December the 18th at 2 p.m. here in the Lakeport City Hall chambers. And uh, that it is made known to the, uh, the county of Lake that it their comments need to be in by the 11th. Their comments must be in by the 11th, one week prior. Okay, we have a motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Right, can we take a break? So I can talk to you. Yeah. Your schedule's yeah. around the room. Janelle. I'll go right now and make sure you get it. Okay. Perfect. So, do you want the break or do you want to keep going? John. Okay. Um, discussion of the CalAFCO conference, October 2014. Well, Scott and I attended the CalAFCO conference, and um, I was hoping to get a little more information on the groundwater legislation, but what I, I did find out and, and realized is that there's um, a lot of, um, nobody really knows. It's too early to tell. The, just, the state's going to come out with these critical water basins, and there's a lot of things that the counties need to do. LAFCO had a, a more significant role in the initial stages of the legislation. Now that the counties have fulfilled that role, the counties will be the, the uh, entity, or I guess more or less the clearinghouse rather than LAFCO, which doesn't mean that we might be seeing some changes of organization through LAFCO for those areas that may want to become um, uh, sus sustainable resource areas. I, I can't remember the term that they use, but um, certain areas in the county may wish to do so. And um, uh, the, it was uh, uh, some of the conference dealt with just an overview of, of LAFCO and, and how the policies and the procedures evolved over time. A lot of you have heard that, that we're all beyond LAFCO 101 at this point. Um, and that session was, uh, um, there, there was, of course it was a Southern California conference, so there was a, quite a bit of a Southern California uh, bent to a groundwater <laughs> basis. Uh, so, uh, uh, Even if it's a Northern that, California uh, conference, there's a lot of Southern California. <laughs> Uh, it was interesting because we think of a water district with four, 500 hookups is nice and, and with, there was one session that I attended that Scott was actually on the panel as a friend of mine, June Lopez, who, who uh, manages a district in uh, Orange County, has 169,000 connections. And <laughs> it's, uh, um, it's, just, it's all relative, but, there, um, but in... in um, uh, let's see, I want to go down.
on some of this here. Um, the uh, it, essentially uh, the the session that. Uh, June was on was that there, we are defining what our critical water basins are, mostly in the Central Valley and the, uh, as opposed to the foothill areas, but we're a lot of the source areas too. And there is a lot of, there is a, a difference in how um, uh, we deal with these, uh, with water issues in, in between the Central Valley and, and Lake County, for example, or Calaveras County, or County like uh, Plumas County. Um, I'm trying to think of you attended uh, something. Uh, did you attend any of these that you might wish to mention? Well, I mean, I thought it was a, actually a pretty good conference all in all. Uh, we have very few distractions of being in Ontario, but there's nothing to see. <laughs> <It's pretty laughs> <cool. laughs> um, we had some uh, some very good panel discussions on uh, groundwater is really the critical issue after the recent <coughs> legislative action, and my my presentation was on LAFCO's role with respect to groundwater, which is of course that you on every change of organization have to make a finding that there is that timely availability of water, so it, it is an important issue for you to determine whether there is an adequate water supply. Not just can the well pump enough water for this subdivision, but whether there's enough water in the ground over the long term to, to sustain the kind of pumping that the city is proposing to do. So this is a, an issue that uh, all of the LAFCOs are going to have to address far more seriously given the drought. And, uh, um, I, and I think it's already an issue you, that this LAFCO is, is well aware of. Mm -hmm. uh, Madam Chair, the 18th is set. Thank you. You're welcome. Woohoo! Oh, sure. Okay, Executive Officer's Report. Okay. I've got to find my binder. The Clear Lake Service Review, I wanted to get that up uh, to a workshop in January. So I've received the uh, comments back from the city manager. Uh, I'm waiting for a little direction on this watershed protection district service re review because there's a portion of that uh, city of Clear Lake service review that references the NPDES permit. And so there's a, a dovetailing that's going on. Uh, and uh, that one is uh, close to, um, to completion at this point. As you are aware, the city uh, has a housing element that is uh, in the process of uh, being finalized. <laughs> long process, and there's a lot of information in, in that that I may I will have to use to update some of the portions of the service review. The general plan is coming up soon. I'll just leave it at that. I don't have a date, and uh, I don't think anybody has. Not a firm date. We're hopefully by the end of the year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The end of this year or next year? Exactly. <laughs> um, the um, fire uh, MSR, I want that to come up uh, after the, the Clear Lake service review. About the day we have the hearing on the Clear Lake service review is about the time we have a workshop on the fire service review so we can get from one into another. And uh, the. John. Uh, the okay. fire service review is all the fire districts? All the fire districts, right. And again, because that's been around for a while, uh, I'm going to have to update some budgetary information because that's essentially what change, changes with these fire districts, uh, a, a chief maybe, because uh, I think we have a new chief in Lakeport. We do. And, then and I'll have to meet him, but I, I will be up here to, to do that on the 18th, I guess. And then, uh, and then, um, Hidden Valley Lake Service Review and Sphere, I met with them and uh, I found that very interesting. I gave them a questionnaire. They were supposed to have the information to me about a month ago and I can bet you 100% the reason why is they received a curtailment order from the Regional Water Quality <coughs> Control Board. And this is a good example of how to, us, I'm collaborating with the County Planning Department because I wouldn't have known that had, had not they sent me something. 
uh, and they sent me something because we were we were reviewing an annexation of the what's that? Crazy uh, Creek. Pardon me. Crazy Creek. The, yeah, the crazy. Well, there was the Crazy Creek Wells, but what's that? Um, oh. Porter has oh valley valley, valley of the valley. subdivision right because they're uh, the county is going to a, a update of the e environmental impact report and uh, Mr. Porter wishes to push that forward at this point so all of this came up I did uh, talk to uh, the city the district manager the district managers indicated that they've got a lot of viable solutions to this uh, curtailment order. So um, I don't know exactly what they are, but we, that, that's going to be very important in, in our service review. Excuse me. John, could you explain what a curtailment order is? I'm used to terms like cease and desist. And so this is well, a new one on me. What it was is uh, the Water Resources Control Board about six or seven months ago. I knew that when I met Felicia Marcus, I told her that she had the most power in the state, and she does. They, what they did was, um, uh, uh, six months ago or so, the, uh, the State Water Board said that well, we've got to curtail the junior water rights holders. They, they have less, they, have, they don't have the rights of a senior water rights holder, that's post-1914 new wells, first in time, first in right, kind of thing. Uh, Hidden Valley Lake, they drilled those wells not too long ago, okay, in, in the scheme of things. So they're a junior water well. Mm -hmm. So what the water board said is that priority goes to the senior water well. So just about a month ago, a letter went out to 22 different counties, I think there were 22 counties that had these curtailment orders where, uh, and they were mostly pumpers with junior water rights, and they told them they are not to have any more connections at this oh. time. John, it's like a cease and desist. John, it's the water's revision. Can I add something here for clarification? Okay. Okay. The Hidden Valley Lake Water District's wells are considered to be surface water wells. They do not tap an aquifer, rather they draw their water from Cache Creek flow underground. Actually, it's not Cache Creek. I'm Creek. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's and, and that's why that's why the water they have been using is considered a junior water right because it's surface water. It's not technically ground water. Which is an interesting point because this one, this one, they are water, but you got wells adjacent to other rivers, and they're called. It's they're considered groundwater. So. There, there is some science involved. I'm not sure how good the science is. But nevertheless, the bottom line is that these, the Hidden Valley Lake wells are junior water runs. To so, Poudre Poud Creek water. To Poudre Creek water. Thank you. Which is over appropriated anyway. Um, and uh, uh, let's see, I'm going down, down here. The mini cannon, I, the mini cannon annexation, we had that on the meeting last week, and I'm, a, I'm going to record that today. I received all the final documents that I need, so that will uh, hopefully finish up soon. Uh, the Resource Conservation District Consolidation, that's going to come up probably in January. Um, we'll get that um, taken care of. Uh, as you know, we have two resource conservation districts in the county, and they expressed a desire to pass the resolution to merge. So they're going to do that. And then my last, um, which is becoming now a, an agenda item I put on every agenda, is a LAFCO clerk. We desperately need a LAFCO clerk, someone to take minutes. Um, that's all I ask. And uh, uh, so anyway, if, again, if any of you know of any anybody that can take minutes, have you had reasonably well. I had nobody. Okay. Nobody. Uh, I every time I talk to somebody in Lake County, I said, "Do you know anyone who, who can take minutes? You know, they don't have to be at the caliber of Janelle or, or Melissa at the city, Clear Lake, or or somebody like that. They just need to take minutes. So I don't need anybody of that high caliber. Uh, and that's really all I have. Thank you, John.
Commissioner reports. Anyone have anything? Well, I have uh, concerning that uh, uh, their state water resources board is not only in the application of water rights from the very familiar with one that's pre 1914, and they have issued the same. Thing. They don't have to take standing to do that, but they're trying. Maybe that's my opinion, but. Yes, in certain critical watersheds where they're trying to maintain uh, fisheries, they're, if, if the, getting rid of the junior isn't sufficient, they actually are considering curtailing senior rights as well. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. And whether they have the legal right to do it is a very obvious thing. Our standard position is they don't. Yeah. As a, as a branch. However, with the new law, in, in by 2024, somewhere around then, They'll clearly have that authority. Oh, yes. Henceforth and forever doesn't really mean that, does it? Anyone else? Any correspondence? Just a, um, oh, a that, letter. I'm sorry, did, did you just skip over commissioner reports? We just did that. Jim. I commented. I wrote the Anyone I, else? I do have one. Yeah. Yeah, and, and this is just for LAFCO's information, the public's information. Um, the Board of Supervisors, maybe a year ago or a year and a half ago, asked county staff um, and interested, um, uh, interested subcommittee of community members to come back to the board with um, some recommendations around how we might approach one of the larger problems we have with land use and open space, in, particularly in the North Shore, but also around the lake. Over the years, uh, actually about 90 years, there have been a number of paper subdivisions that have been created over time, and this is uh, what would be considered open space if you look at it, but what is actually uh, subdivisions that look like San Francisco when you put the subdivision map on top of it. And it's caused all kinds of difficulty in the county over that course of time, um, including runoff into the lake and, and the illegal activity, and it's just, it, it's very difficult to police and manage. A report, of, of basically a, a, a suggested approach has been presented to the board this week. And I would urge uh, members of LAFCO and members of the public just to get a copy of that and take a look at it. It's in yesterday's board packet. But the, the committee work was excellent. Just the research that was done on how these things came about, what the subdivisions are, what the problems are up there, and what some of the longer term solutions are. The, it was the board's direction to staff to um, come back with a more detailed plan and potentially look at a pilot project where we can start to see if we can't unwind some of that over time. It's going to take a very long time to do. Obviously, these are all owned by absent, you know, mostly absentee owners. Many of them, 20% or more, are in tax default, some of five years or more tax default. So it's really a mess. And um, to unwind, it's going to take many, many years. But I, the reason I think at LAFCO may be interested in this is not just for the watershed protection issues, but also this was open space, it's been subdivided, and now there's kind of, you know, how do you unwind that? What are the, there are many policies in the way that make it difficult to do, even if the owners want to give it back. So, um, I would love to see that. We get calls in the real estate office all the time yeah. on those paper lots. And, and they're a mess. And they people, inherit them, they pass them down, pass them down. They, where the invest their life savings they, thinking they've got a lake front. Somebody sold a bunch of those at some point and people thought they were striking it rich. Something. And they're still doing it. And, and ironically, mm -hmm. um, it, it was the subdividing of that land that actually financed the building of the Lucerne Hotel. That it was makes sense. back in the 20s. What happened. It was a land scam. Yeah. It was all over the country, these kinds of things were happening. It was Swampland in Florida, the New Cashville was one of them. So, the New Cashville. Yeah, New right. Cashville they, was one they, of them. They were nothing. So, generally, when people call and we explain to them what they have, they I think a lot of them stop paying their tax. Right. They stop paying their taxes, so they're in tax default. Yeah. And it creates all kinds of problems. So exactly. I, I guess my point is there may be a role for LAFCO to ask for certain legislation in the future that might help unwind some of these things that have been created. Um, we don't know what that is yet. What we do know is that county council is going to begin to look at what's available to the county. And it's going to be a long-term mm -hmm. effort. But I wanted to make the LAFCO board aware of it and let the public know that's a, that just describing the problem is the first step. And that document was very, did a very good job of that. Yeah, I just, uh, I've, I've got more of a question, I think. Um, I don't know when this commission changes and changes seats, but I think that there's, a, there are a couple of 
things that are up. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if Ed and mine. Oh, I, we're two years, right? And we've done two years, I believe. You've got more time on your. Do I, I? The districts have more time also. Oh, okay. Because I didn't know about the cities, and I didn't know the about city, the cities. Cities change with their first meeting in December. Right. And, and they make down. committee assignments. It may or may not be the same. Right. Okay. Because I and I, my question, another question, I guess, was how, what happens with the city. Does the alternate change? Yeah, it, it won't. It will no longer be me. It'll go back to Clear Lake. Back to Clear Lake. Okay. Has it been two years? Well, I think we, it's a year. Is I it thought it's. Is it, I think it's every year. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have to look. Uh, okay, every year. I think I wrote that down. It might be worthwhile for the city members to request some continuity given what's on the black code. I, I, I think, think that. The, so well, yeah. well, the well, chair. Yeah. Must be. <laughs> yeah. The, unfortunately, uh, the alternate was Joey Lewis. Like, so he won't be available. <laughs> uh, and they'll serve until the mayor's select committee makes their decisions. Which may or may right. not be the first meeting. Oh, it won't be the it first meeting. meeting. There's no weeks after that. So it's usually in January. January. And that's what happened with Martin, is that Joey was on it a few months later because mm -hmm. the mayor's select committee never, never selected. selected. And maybe a year seems to not be enough. Uh, yeah. I, I, that's why I was thinking it was two years. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Since yeah. you mentioned my seat, uh, what's my status? Your uh, your my term ends in, in two years from May, as well as Suzanne's. Oh, so you're not from May. May. So I'm in January. That's right. That's not. I'm still here. <laughs> you know, you're okay. How many terms is it? I mean, how many years is a term? Four, four years. Four years. Four years. Oh, four. Okay. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> Ever enters. Um, any other commissioners? I'll be gone. <laughs> That's right. Greedy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys said Okay. Correspondence. Do we have any correspondence? Uh, just the letter I sent to the county of working with the EIR on the uh, Valley Oaks subdivision. Okay. So. We're going to adjourn Delacco's next regular meeting, which actually yeah. to our next special meeting of December 18th at 2 o'clock. City Council. Meeting adjourned.